In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the FlexFire 6 from Wicked Technologies. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to point out that this stove was sent to me by Wicked Technologies for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. I am also not being compensated in any other way by Wicked Technologies. All right, so this is the third and final video in the series that has been highlighting the Lightfire stove, the FlexFire 4, and now the FlexFire 6, all from Wicca Technologies. So what I'd like to do is take this stove down to the tabletop. I'm going to assemble it for you. We'll go over the specifications. We'll go over its modes of operation, especially with the various fuels that it can use. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Let's begin by showing you how the FlexFire 6 arrived from Germany to me. So it did come with this manual and the stove in this case. And if these look familiar, they are exactly the very case and manual that came with the FlexFire 4. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. So the manual, as I mentioned in the other video, describes the assembly of the stove, the operation of the stove, and shows some of the accessories that are available with the stove. I'll put that aside for now. So the case, as I described with the other video, is made of a heavy-duty cotton material, well-constructed, and certainly up to the task of keeping the stove all together in one place. Inside the envelope, I'll take the components out. I'm just going to lay them down for a second. I also want to point this out, as I did in the FlexFire 4 video, that this case comes with two strips of Velcro, so that the case can be either used for the FlexFire 6, as it was just now, or fold it over, it can be used for the FlexFire 4. All right, let's put the case aside. So let me go through the various components to begin with. This is the front plate, obviously, with the feed port. This is also identified as the Omega plate down in the lower corner there. You should be able to see the Omega symbol. This is the back plate, and the back plate looks very much like the side plates, but it's differentiated by the alpha symbol down in the corner, meaning this is the first one you use when you go to put it together. Then there are four more identical side plates. Fire grate. Ash pan. And two pot supports. We'll put those aside for a second. Now, if this looks familiar to the FlexFire 4, it's obviously the insane pieces. In fact, all I've added to create the FlexFire 6 from the FlexFire 4 is two more side panels and the larger fire grate and larger ash pan. So let's put this together, starting with the alpha plate, the back plate. Assemble five of the six side plates on. Now, I will tell you, this is a bit trickier to put together than was the FlexFire 4. I don't think that's a surprise when you're dealing with six plates instead of four. Now, the trick to doing this, and this may be the, the most uh, challenging part of the whole operating the, of, of the stove, is getting this put together. You'll see that I've left the Omega plate, the last plate, aside for a minute. And I do want to put in both the fire grate and the ash pan at the same time. So open up your assembly of five plates. Take your fire grate, and remember these have tabs on five of the six sides for this plate. The front plate has no tab. Line those up with the slot for their intended purpose. Now, my, my experience tells me that don't bother lining up, or don't yet line up the last two plates, the ones on either side of the opening. Leave those loose. So you're gonna end up, see if I can raise the camera up a tiny bit to give you a better view of what I'm doing here. I forgot how big the stove is. I'm actually going to grab onto the back three plates for now. I'm not going to worry so much about these two plates on the sides. I'm going to let them swing a little bit free because in order to get the ash pan in, I need those things to be a little bit loose. And now I'll try and get that in. Not try, I will get that in. But it's a little easier because those, as I mentioned with the FlexFire 4, those last slots are quite big and open. So it's just a matter of falling into place like that. Set it down. Now I hold it by the front two plates. 
pick up the alpha plate. And this is also a little bit more challenging than it is on the FlexFire 4 because, I'll see if I can turn this, these two plates have narrowed in a little bit and it's not as simply a matter of dropping it down. You have to open them those up a tiny bit so you can negotiate this last one into place. And it's easy once you get the hang of it. It does take a, a little bit of trying and understanding of how the parts to go together. And uh, my experience uh, that I just shared with you might help a, a bit for you. So the last part of the setup, of course, is adding the crossbars to the top. But you cannot use them as crossbars. They will not work in the cross position. These have to be used now in the parallel position. And you can choose the two corresponding sides, front to back, back to side, whatever which way you wish. But you also have the choice now of using the deeper slot on the, on the top or bottom. It doesn't really make any difference except for the amount of height that it will generate. I like going from front to back and I'll explain why in a minute. So now I have a pot support with good clearance, just enough clearance above the stove, and there's a lot of airflow all the way around the top, also that's a hallmark of the design of the stove. And I can put large pots on top, or I can put small pots on top because of those two crossbars. As with the Flex Fire, the Light Fire, or the Flex Fire 4 and the Light Fire, you can pick this stove up from the back, either of the two back panels, Definitely not from the front panel, and to be honest, I wouldn't pick it up from the two forward panels here as well. Pick it up from the front panel, your stove's going to open up and fall apart. There is a means of locking the stove in, which I will demonstrate to you in a few moments. Okay, now, uh, let's go over the statistics or the specifications for the stove. So to begin, the overall weight of this stove is 1 pound, 7.4 ounces, or 666 grams. Its height is the same, of course, as the FlexFire 4 at six and three quarters inches, or 17 centimeters. Its width now is also six and one half inches, or 16 centimeters. And the burn chamber depth would be the same as it is with the FlexFire 4 at four and three quarters inch. That's from the fire grate to the top of the stove, which is also 12 centimeters. The stove is made from that proprietary uh, titanium stainless steel alloy with a 0.8 millimeter thickness, giving it plenty of strength and yet lighter than if it was just made from stainless steel. Okay, while I have the stove assembled in front of you before we start talking about its intent or its operational use, I want to share with you there are two uh, variations on the FlexFire 6. When you go to the website, which of course I'm going to be putting in the show notes below, you'll see that there are a total of three options. So you can get the basic stove, which is everything I've shown you this at this point. Then you can get the FlexFire 6 Plus, which adds two components, a solid Omega plate, I'll explain in a minute, and a grill, which is really quite nice. Heavy duty I said before, two, twice as thick. I think it's more like three times as thick as the side panels are. Let me take the two crossbars off and put the grill on. So the grill has no specific way. It has tabs on all four sides, and they drop into the recesses on the top of the side panels, and it's on there nice and tight. It's not falling off. It's very easy to get on. Okay, so now I have the grill on. What's the point of this panel? So this is the optional Omega panel, and what you would use this for is if you're using it primarily with charcoal, but yes, you can use it with wood as well. So I would replace the feed port plate with this plate, and then I'd end up with a solid on all six sides. That allows more charcoal to be entered into the stove without any falling out of the feed port, but also improves airflow as it's more directed up through the charcoal as it should be. All right, now I mentioned a minute ago that you can lock these plates into side a little bit more efficiently. In order to do that though, you do need to use your two pot stands. Now, if you're gonna use the pot stands for this, then you are gonna need something else to put on top. Let me demonstrate. So to start, these plates all have slots, vertical slots, down near the bottom. And those vertical slots are used for, and this is the best example, for locking in the plates together. And I do have to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm sliding this through, front to back. 
bringing it through the corresponding slot on the back of the stove and letting the notches slide into place. Made just a tiny bit challenging for myself by trying to do this backwards so I can't see. There we go, that's locked in. Now, that locks in the sides so that it's less likely to come apart on you. And if you in a t unintentionally lifted it by the front, then it's going to hold in place without falling apart. It's an extra safety feature. It's not required to operate the stove. It's just an extra feature that you can add to the stove to give it a little bit more rigidity maybe, or at least safety in terms of not falling apart. Having said that, if you want to use those crossbars in the, the parallel fashion that they're intended for use on this stove, you just have to remember, don't grab it by the front. So that's all there is. Okay, now this was the Flex Fire six with the basic, the FlexFire six plus with the additional plate. What turns it into a FlexFire six premium? Fire grate, ash pan, grill plate, all for the FlexFire four. So if you look on the website, you'll see the, the biggest system or the most expensive, most comprehensive system they have. It is the FlexFire six premium. And within that, you actually get two complete stoves. You get the Flex Fire 4 and you get the Flex Fire 6 all together. It's just a matter of adding two panels to the 4 to turn it into the 6. Now there are some other optional accessories that you can purchase and I'll demonstrate those in a few minutes time. But let's go over the operation of the stove with a variety of fuels. As you can see without question this is a big stove and I'll give you some comparisons before we end the video with uh, some other commonly and well-known stoves. But what I want to show you now is a couple of ways of using the stove with a variety of fuels. Let me take those pot stands out because I'm going to require that for the demonstration in a moment. Um, so obviously it's a wood stove. Let's use it with wood. So as you can see, being this big, it can hold a lot of wood. This is a six inch piece of wood it completely goes inside of the stove, and with room to spare, in fact. And if you go corner to corner, it's even longer. So you can get in some big pieces of wood. This is a 10 inch piece of wood, and almost all of that goes into the stove. So you can feed 10 inch to 12 inch pieces of wood in this without any problems whatsoever. Again, the longer it is, you just have to keep an eye on it that they don't fall backwards and fall out as they're consumed on the inside. But you can load a lot of wood. You can do a top-down burn by stacking everything vertically or horizontally. This actually makes horizontal stack a lot easier because you don't have to process the wood all that small. And then, of course, light a small fire on top and you'll have a steady, consistent burn for as long as you have fuel in the stove. Or you can do a more controlled bottom-up burn, which gives you the, the option of starting a small fire and uh, just feeding it as you need to. So wood, obviously very good for wood. Now there is an option, which I'll show you in, in a minute's time, that you can actually feed more wood into this than you can just in this configuration. I know that sounds confusing, but I'll demonstrate in a minute. So wood, that's the primary use. This, again, I can't tell you just well, you'll see it when I do a comparison. This is a big stove. This is a fireplace for all intents and purposes. I think you could use it for exactly that, sitting around and enjoying a good sized fire, doing some roasting of marshmallows or anything else you want over it. In fact, I think you could put a large Dutch oven. Well, you can. I've actually have a Dutch oven and some fry pans here that completely, you know, this stove will support because it's plenty strong and you have almost all the bottom of your pan or your pot covered with, uh, with hot coals or whatever you're going to be using inside. After wood, the primary fuel most people want to know, can I use it with, is alcohol. So it's virtually identical in use for alcohol as it is with the FlexFire 4 in that you can do a few things. The easiest way is, and I'm going to save a few minutes here on this video and not actually do the changes, and if you would like to see how the changes impact the, the operation of the stove, please go back to the Flex Fire 4 video. But as I did with the Flex Fire 4, I can take either the ash pan or the fire grate out, reassemble the stove with either of those two plates in these upper slots. And with the, those in the upper slots, then I can take my trangia and drop it on and I get a one inch clearance to the top of the pot stands. So that's uh, uh, the, the easiest way probably to do it. However, 
uh, there is another way, and since the stove comes with these, you might as well use them this way. So to use it this way, you're going to use the upper two slots of any, uh, actually only four of the pan or five of the panels have it, the, the last panel doesn't have it. Those vertical slots, like the ones at the bottom, there's another set up here. And if I take those two pot stands, slide them through, drop them into place, Lining it up there, dropped into place. Now I can take my Trangia stove, drop those into the bars, perfectly support it at just, well, it's the same height, it's still only the one inch clearance to the very top. Actually, now without any pot bars on, it's probably more like three quarters or maybe, yeah, closer to three quarters clearance to the very top of the stove. But now I'm going to need some way of supporting a pot. If you bought the option or the Flex Fire 6 Plus, of course, you could use the grill. Uh, I wouldn't use the grill for boiling water because this is going to soak up a lot of your heat generated by the alcohol. So what I would recommend is when you purchase the stove, if you think you might be using it with alcohol and you would like to set it up like this using the crossbars, buy yourself another set of crossbars. That having an extra set of crossbars at small increase to your cost gives you the option of having the ability to uh, use the alcohol burner set up like this on those crossbars and still have a set of crossbars that you can support your pot on. It also gives the ability to lock the front plate in and still have a set of crossbars again to use on top of the store, uh, on top of the stove. So that is one recommendation I would give you is definitely if you can afford it, and they're not very expensive as you'll see on the website, pick up an extra set of crossbars. Of course, they also the benefit also would be there that if you happen to lose one, you'd still have at least two that you could use. Okay, so that's use with alcohol. Uh, what about use with gas? Let's, I'm, I'm doing gas now before I talk about wood pellets or solid fuel for, for a reason. What about using this with gas? Well, there are a couple of ways that you can use with gas. The easiest way is to use a Trangia gas adapter. And I did mention that in my previous video that this is a copy of the Trangia gas adapter made by Bulin. But in, in every way that I can tell and from all the reviews, it's virtually identical. It operates exactly the same way. So all you need to do at this point is to drop this into place. Now, there is an adaptation I'd recommend in a minute to make this even easier to use. But you should be able to see if I can tip this forward that the gas adapter also sits across those two crossbars just like the Trangia did because, of course, it is the sized and, and uh, engineered to do exactly that, sit on those crossbars. My feed hose is a little bit more challenging to bring out to reach the, the remote tank. I could bring the feed hose out through the feed window, but uh, I, I think it's a little bit too close to the heat. So you can work it down through the fire grate. Better off, I think I would leave the fire grate out of this altogether. Leave the ash pan in, but leave the fire grate out. And then I can bring it out, the feed port out through one of these holes and over to my remote canister. There is another option, which I'll show you now. So when you're assembling the stove, if you purchase this as an option, this may look familiar. It looks like an oversized version of the one that came or that was available for the FlexFire 4. This is a Trangia plate. This would drop in to those spots along these, these uh, slots here with those tabs, would hold it in place. And then, of course, the Trangia would drop in. as with the gas adapter. All right, so that's an option I would buy. I would consider doing this because it does make life a little bit easier. This, I suppose you could get away with using an extra set of crossbars without using this, and you could do it that way. But if you're looking for the thing that is designed for it, the plate that is designed for it, it would be this. Now, one other option I mentioned a minute ago, and I will reassemble the stove to show you how this operates and then come back and explain what its intended use is. All right, so what have I done to make the stove different this time? Well, there is another optional plate that you can add to the Flex Fire 6. You could add it to the 4, but it just makes more sense to add it to the Flex Fire 6, and that is a low feed port. And this goes on as one of the side plates, not as the back plate, but as one of the side plates. So now I have a low feed port and a high feed port. What's the benefit there? 
crisscrossing your wood. So you can put wood in at two angles. I know that's familiar to the uh, people who own the firebox stove. It's a similar concept to be able to crisscross cross wood like that, but it allows you to put a lot more wood in, fed in from the two sides. Now the feed ports, of course, are much larger than they are on the, the firebox stove. But again, you have the option of now feeding wood in from two angles. It does also make it easier if you're using a remote gas feed to be able to just slide it out through the side. It also allows more air to come in, not that this stove requires it because it's well designed with great airflow. Now when I reassembled the stove this time, I intentionally left out the ash grate for a reason. So when you're using the stove, if you're looking to lighten your load a little bit as you pack it out, now remember this is a big stove, this is not an ultra light hiking stove, even though it is light for its size and thickness, it is still a big stove. But if you did decide you wanted to take this and just lighten your load a little bit, you could leave this home. You could, as long as you remember, to set the stove up on a fire safe surface, rock or uh, mineral earth or something like that. Because this is all, that's all this is intended for is to protect the surface you're using the stove on. However, there is a secondary use. It's no different than what it would be for the FlexFire 4. This can be inserted in the stove at those higher slots on all five sides here and now you have a plate that you can use solid fuel on. I prefer using a plate, this, a solid plate like this for solid fuel because it slows the combustion of the solid fuel down enough to give you the time it needs to heat your water or whatever else you're heating up. Optionally, of course, you could just use the fire grate and bring that up to that level and use solid fuel, but you're going to have to use some type of an aluminum foil or something else on the plate to cup the solid fuel as you use it. All right, let's put those aside. I said that there are a couple more options that I wanted to show you and they go along with the next fuel use. So we have covered wood, we have covered alcohol, we have covered gas, and we have covered solid fuel. What's left? One of my favorites, wood pellets. So this is a wood pellet plate that is sold as an option by Wicked Technologies for the Flex Fire 6. And uh, if you want to use wood pellets, and I'd recommend it because wood pellets are a tremendous fuel for using in the stove, this is what you're going to use. I think I got in three cups of uh, pellets in on top of this for, you know, at least an hour's burn time. I don't know that I actually stayed around to watch the whole thing. You know, this would work for an extended burn time with wood pellets. After three cups, uh, airflow starts to diminish because, of course, the air has to be able to move through all the pellets, not just through the plate, but through all the pellets. So three cups is about as much as I think I'd want to use with these. Now, what's nice about using a plate and wood pellets is that if you're using hardwood pellets, and I'll qualify that in a second, if you're using hardwood pellets, as the flame goes out, you've got grill or coals that you can grill over for quite a long time. So it makes it worthwhile. Now, one thing I've noticed, I've used this probably eight, nine times with wood pellets, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a slight warping, a bending in the middle. That's a big plate to, to support heat on. So there is a slight warping, bending in the middle here. However, what I found is, turn it over. So the next time I assembled it, I just turned it over and it flattened out. So it's it it's not much. I mean, it's certainly not going to affect the performance of the stove in any way. I have no problem assembling the stove with this or operating the stove. And as I mentioned, if it starts to warp, it can't warp too much because just the way the stove is designed, it can only bend a little anyway. And if it does, just flip it over and put it back together for the next burn. Something I have not mentioned, I think it's probably easier to demonstrate on one of the smaller panels is this is the plate for the Flex Fire 4, also used in the Light Fire. If you look closely, you're going to see spaces between a few of the crossbars here. And I asked the, the owner of Wicked uh, Technologies what that was for, and he said, well, it was partly for aesthetics, but it does also help with the heat management and allows for expansion and lessen the chances of warping. And I'm looking at the plate now at angle, and I have the slightest bit of warping taking place, but you would have to actually look at it on edge to see it. It's not significant at all. And of course, that's a credit to the thickness of the metal as well as the components in the metal being the aluminum, or excuse me, not aluminum, <laughs> titanium and stainless steel. So uh, people would ask, I know they'll ask about warping. Does the, does the plates warp? Yes, they do, a very tiny bit. They do warp, but 
not so much that it will affect the performance of the stove and not so much that I just can't turn the plate over for the next fire and have them straighten themselves out. So there is one last fuel I want to talk about and that is charcoal. But before we do, there is something I almost for forgot to demonstrate and that is something that uh, they have inside the manual for the Flex Fire 6 and that is, I had shown you a minute ago how you can use the, the uh, Trangia adap gas adapter inside of the stove, but you could also use just about any other remote feed canister gas stove inside uh, of here. Now this is one that I have that I picked up from China but it's a very common shape. In order to do that feed the hose out, drop the whole stove down inside and uh, yeah it works quite well to hold that stove there. I guess what it might do if your pot's a little bit smaller is you can reach the pot down inside and you've got some windscreen to protect it from the wind obviously but if you have a very large pot then of course you could also put it on top of that. Okay let me just pull that out and let's talk about charcoal. So the very size of this stove makes it ideal for using with charcoal. You have a charcoal barbecue. Look at the size of this thing. You can get a lot of charcoal in here. I think it is 18 or maybe 20 briquettes and I'm using them as a standard of measurement because most people are familiar with what their size is. But you can get a lot of charcoal in there and to, to use. Now I would recommend if you're going to do that that you buy the FlexFire uh, 6 plus so that you can get the solid omega plate to get the most out of the charcoal and add the grill plate. You'll have the grill plate with that option as well so you can add the two of those things on and use this as a charcoal barbecue. Of course you could also if you wanted to do some Dutch oven cooking you could use this to put the Dutch oven on top of it as well. It is that big. All right so I promised before we went to the woods that I would show you some size comparisons. I think there's only one stove that I want to bring into the picture right now to give you a size comparison because it's a representative of some another large stove and there's a couple about the same size but let me just put that to one side a little bit and bring in this is the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox L, XL the largest in their series and it's almost identical in size to the uh, 5 inch Gen 2 firebox in terms of dimensions so it's representative and as you can see it, it may be a tiny bit taller and I'm looking at about a half an inch taller in height here but this stove just dwarfs it in terms of its internal capacity. The flex fire can hold so much more wood inside of it. And uh, I'm looking in at the fire grate. They're about on par to the same level from, from the, so there's about the same depth of chamber with the, the, the XL being just a tiny bit taller. So that's my best comparison that I can give you to another well-known stove. Uh, what can I say is that the weight, believe it or not, the weight of the titanium version of the XL and this version, the premium, the FlexFire Premium or FlexFire 6 is pretty close. They're actually not that far apart. Again, there's much more volume inside of the FlexFire 6 for putting a lot more wood or charcoal or anything else that you want to put inside. Okay, now let's get outside and do some testing. So the wind has really picked up out here in the wilderness today. Uh, but I need to make my lunch anyway, so I'm going to go ahead with this test. So I have the FlexFire 6 sitting in the fire pit, so it has a safe surface underneath and some wind protection, much needed wind protection today. It does have the ash pan in so I'm not concerned with coals falling through onto the ground. I have birch bark ready to go inside. I have a bundle of spruce twigs sitting beside me. I have some larger spruce pieces that I'm going to feed in but then I'm going to feed in some maple splits that I have here because I really need to have uh, a good coal of uh, coals, a good uh, bed of coals for my lunch and I'll show you what that is when we get to it. So let's get this thing going. Birch bark is amazing, always. I do have a couple of pieces of fat wood that if I have them why not use them? Just little tiny pieces. First part of this fire is always going to have a lot of flame and a lot of heat, wow. Get inside. There we go. Inside. But it won't take long for them to burn down. And then I can start adding on some slightly larger pieces. 
You can see that this is a big stove. I mean, this is a fireplace for all intents and purposes. It's going to, uh, you know, do all the cooking that I could ever want to do for any number of people. But it could also act as a fireplace or something to sit around and just roast marshmallows over or you know, just enjoy the heat from. Because there is some heat coming off of that. Ooh. Starting to throw in a few larger pieces. And the wood that I'm using has been sitting on the ground here and through our recent rainstorms. So I'm hoping that it is, well, it feels dry. We'll know shortly because you'll see moisture coming out of the end of the sticks if it's not. That seems to be working pretty good right now. Man, that's a big stove. That's a big fire in that stove. So, yeah, so I thought rather than do the usual put on a pot of water or even a fry pan, I was going to do something different today. I wanted to use the grill that came with this stove, and I have a special meal prepared to grill over some coals, but it does take a little time for all this to burn down to coals. And, of course, spruce and pine do not make good coals for grilling over, so I have to wait for those to burn down some, then start adding in my hardwood. And when I have something that's worth grilling over, and that's when I'll bring you back. So I thought as I was waiting for the wood to burn down to coals that I could grill over that I would make use of the heat and flame and drop my billy tin down with the tripod into the flame, start heating my water up that I can use for either my coffee or doing dishes afterwards, probably coffee of course. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you just again just how big this stove is. I know I keep saying that, but this stove will suffice for a fireplace for most people. It's bigger than what I need for my cooking needs. Um, certainly if I had two people, but as you'll see, it's going to work well for grilling on in a few minutes time. So again, I still have to wait a while longer before those uh, pieces of hardwood will work their way down into grilling coals. So it took a few minutes for the fire to burn down. There's still a little bit of flames uh, just inside. You probably can't see them in the light here, but it's low enough that I can get my dinner on. So dinner for today is something that I have not done before and I'm hoping that it works out. It is a, another ketogenic meal but something I've made up for myself and something I've wanted to try for a period of time and uh, as I lay this on I'll explain what it is. So it's obviously a shish kebab but it's what is in the shish kebab that... oh nice sizzle. So uh, I've got a few more to put on. Of course there is Italian sausage and uh, as meat uh, green peppers, red peppers, onions, and halloumi cheese. Halloumi cheese is a cheese specifically designed for grilling. It won't melt and fall off of the skewers as uh, a lot of other cheeses might do. So I'm looking forward to trying this to see how it works out. I did cut these up last night before bringing them out and marinated them overnight with some olive oil, some, uh, what else did I use? Oh, losing the sausages. Yeah, I was a little worried about these sausages. The skins are so thin on them. But I marinated them in olive oil, lemon juice, oregano, and basil. So give it somewhat of a Greek flavor, as you might get on Greek sish kebabs. And uh, with the flame as it is, and the heat's still quite high, I am going to have to move things along. But, uh, yeah, that's one of the nice things, again, about the size of this stove and that heavy-duty grill is that I can do exactly this. I can grill some good size. Well, if it wasn't this, it might have been a big piece of chicken, nice big steak. Good. I think you could probably put half a dozen sausages. There's three full sausages on these skewers. Or, two, sorry, two full sausages on these skewers and quite a bit of cheese and everything else. Great, the flames have gone out below and it's just hot coals cooking them now. So it's going to take a few minutes for these to cook up, and this is my lunch today. Well, it's interesting, for the last 10 or 15 minutes, the wind had kind of died down while I was grilling my lunch, and I really appreciated that. But now that my lunch is finished and I <laughs> want to record again, the uh, wind has picked back up. So I, uh, I'm going to eat in a moment, but I want to share with you the lunch that I made on the FlexFire 6 Premium using the grill and then have a few words on the stove itself. So let me just show you my lunch. I always have trouble finding where I'm at. So that is the uh, shish kebab and uh, sausages, 
uh, what was it? Sausages, onions, green and red peppers, and halloumi cheese. Now I want to find a piece of the halloumi cheese so you can see that. You can see it stayed consistent. It didn't uh, melt or fall off. Actually, it has a nice chewy texture too. Uh, all right, might be up a tiny bit. Wow. Like I said, I, I um, cut these up last night, marinated them overnight in the fridge, brought them out, although I brought the skewers out separate and just put everything together and put it over the grill here. It's not something you're going to do for um, a multi-day hike, but for a day hike, what a great meal. Perfect, really. Everything's cooked up just nicely, grilled and with the oil and everything. Wow. And enough protein and fat to uh, qualify as a ketogenic meal. Okay. I just want to give you a few closing words on the FlexFire 6 premium stove. So this being the six-sided stove is quite large and considerably larger than the four-sided stove, of course, two extra pieces. But the dynamic that it gives you in terms of the extra heat that you can generate and the coals for grilling are greater than, they are much greater than just the size difference between the FlexFire 6 and the FlexFire 4. I find the FlexFire 4 works very well for boiling, and yes, you can cook with it, but because of its relationship of height to width, it has a greater chimney effect than does the FlexFire 6. That lends itself through to go through wood much quicker. It's a little bit more hungry in terms of the wood that it wants to consume. Produces a lot of clean, fast heat. But, you know, for this type of cooking, you want grilling coal. So the larger stove gives you that option to have larger coals. Do you know, when I put this on, and I, yes, I've used the stove many times. Well, at this point, probably a dozen times. But I was a little worried that I wasn't going to get the grilling coals that I was looking for because the fire grate in this is so much open space compared to solid space. There's more holes than there is metal. But, and I had considered, what if I use the wood pellet grate instead because it has less holes than metal, so you would have less airflow coming through the bottom. I haven't tried that. I debated doing that today, but I wanted to use it, the stove this time at least, as it was intended. I had also intended on doing a couple of other demonstrations, including using this with pellets. I'm not sure that's going to happen today. I likely will come back out another time and use the stove and give you another demonstration of using the stove with wood pellets and alcohol, uh, although it works like most other stoves do with alcohol. It works well. It's nice to have that option to be able to set it up with alcohol. Yeah, so the stove is large, and I've kept saying that, but this is the largest stove I have in my collection, and still not that heavy. And of course, that's due to the fact that it's made of that titanium stainless steel alloy. It is lighter than a st straight up stainless steel stove would be. It's managing the heat very well. I'm not seeing any warping at all, a except for, I think I showed you, the pellet plate and the fire grate do seem to dip down a little bit after a, a few uses. And of course, the fix for that is easy. Flip it over and insert it in the inverted position the next time you go to use it, and it will level itself off. But the side walls, the panels that make up the walls, are not showing any signs of heat damage or warping whatsoever. And you could see, I just had a really intense fire in that stove. Okay, I think that's enough going on about the stove itself. If it's obvious I like it, I do. If there is a downside to the stove, it is the assembly. It's not a hinge stove. It does take a little bit of time, a little bit of coordination to get it assembled. It is not difficult. A little bit of practice goes a long way, and I know somebody's going to say, yes, I'd like to see you do that in the winter. Okay, I will. I'll do that in the winter. I it's not that difficult. The parts have enough looseness in their tolerances that you, you, know, you get it really close and you give it a shake and it seems to fall into place. Once it's together, as long as you understand which panel not to grab, it won't fall apart on you. Uh, and it just stays together during use. So I guess that may be the only downside, but it is that component design to it that gives it the, the uh, flexibility, it, hence the name FlexFire, where you can change it from a four-sided stove to a six-sided stove and use all the different options to get the different performance out of it. Okay, that's enough. If you have any questions 
or comments about the Flex Fire 6, please put them in the comments section below. And of course, I'll put not only the specifications for the stove, but where you can purchase it for yourself. And until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.